Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of Annie's Replay Casting. Today we've got a special treat for you. It's going to be match 2208817901. I'm Annie, your caster. I am not doing this alone here. I'm going to be joined by the one, the only, Dino Brutality X. What's up, dude? What's up, Annie? How's it going? I'm super excited for this. Juggernaut's got a weird head going on. It looks like he's decapitated. But uh, on that note, I guess if we can start introducing the Radiant team, we're going to have YG987 playing the Juggernaut. Uh, Didaster is going to be on the Huskar. We're going to have Ivory on the puck in the mid lane. Over here towards the top, we've got a Ricky being played by CN, some characters. And down here, uh, just chilling out in the base, we've got Gorus on the Keeper of the Light. <laughs> And over on Dyer's side, oh, we got some action already breaking out, so let's, uh, we'll get to Dyer in a minute here as soon as the uh, the stomp over the top bounty rune finishes up here. But uh, while that's going on, the person being chased there is Hand of Gods, who's on the Shadow Shaman. Uh, running back up top is LSD Visual on the AM. Uh, looks like mids will be played by Arch, and he will be on the Pudge. Down by bottom rune, you have Hush, who's rocking a pretty solid Omni Knight set. And last but not least, on the off lane, we have dancing, gay dancing cupcake, uh, rocking the earth shaker. Oh, that might uh, rival us for the best name we've seen so far in these pubs. Uh, gay dancing cupcake. You know, you, you really get everything you gotta know about that guy, all from his name. LDS visual is gonna be taking a lot of damage there. As keeper of, keeper of the light ops to scale illuminate first. I usually go for a point in that chakra magic just because. Uh, it's it's really nice to be able to keep everyone sustainable in lane, but I guess Ricky doesn't really need that mana anyway, so uh, Carry don't need no support. Gonna be going in. Yep. Keeper of the Light, uh, an unusual sight, gonna be buying up those uh, clarities, keeping himself full of mana. So uh, this is probably gonna be kind of a tricky lane here for LDS Visual. Gonna constantly be, have to be blinking back. He only has two tangos left, and Shadow Shaman. I mean, he can spot his buddy a couple, but they're both pretty squishy here in the early game. Yeah, I would have preferred Shadow Shaman off the bat getting packs versus getting Shackles, because I think it's going to be a tough lane for him to ever get Shackle off as soon as Ricky starts leveling that cloud, but we'll have to see how that plays out uh, down the line here. Absolutely. If we just look at last hits in this first wave or so, our leader is the Puck in this mid lane. I think Puck against Pudge is probably one of the stompier lineups, unless Puck completely lets himself get hooked. Uh, Ivory has the potential to, yeah, do exactly that. Phase shift, uh, dodge all the damage coming out, and obviously harass the heck out of Pudge from a range. Yeah, it's one of my preferred lineups if I'm playing against a Pudge if I have mid as Puck, because uh, phase shift definitely is just uh, too overpowered, and then also when you get the waning rift to silence, it's fantastic. Once Rot is on, you can laugh as they take damage. Oh, down bottom. We could have some damage coming out here as Hush can be burning, gonna be spinning. Didaster wants to go in, wants to use those burning spears. Going in a little bit more, we'll take him down. So it will be Huskar securing first blood, taking out the Omni Knight. There's no saving him there. And Earthshaker has to cower backwards underneath his own tower. There's gonna be an immediate TP back here from the Omni. He does not want to be out of lane for a single second. Gay Dancing Cupcake going in deeply and... Oddly enough, well, very unusual skill build. Yeah, I was just going to say, we with, have no Fissure. Uh, yep, Totem Aftershock instead of one Fissure. Yep. I mean, I don't... I guess the arming value is going to be on the ES rather than the uh, Omni Knight, so it looks like five position solid Omni Knight, unless he's four with the uh, Shadow Shot and buying the rest of the support stuff, but we will have a farming ES on bottom who now picks up a level one of Fissure. Maybe he's getting flamed out by his team and we just can't see it. <laughs> I mean, perhaps. I think maybe Omni was like, bro, why didn't you save me? But uh, I honestly like... Oh, we got action up top. It's going to be Shadow Shaman stuck in a cloud by Ricky, and that's going to be uh, an easy kill for Ricky. Uh, both of those uh, AM as well as the Shadow Shaman sitting on very low life due to the uh, blast coming out from uh, Illuminated the Keeper of the Light. Yeah, Coddle's actually doing a fantastic job here going up against AM. Usually that squishy little old dude on a horse has some trouble keeping up, but... Those Illuminates have certainly been doing work. He does now pick up two points in the Chakra Magic, so he's able to keep himself sustainable. LDS Visual, again, forced back from the wave. That's not where you want to see an Anti-Mage at, at just, you know, four minutes in the game. Down bottom, though, we've got some chases going on. Oh, no. Omni Knight walks back the wrong way. He's going to be using that Repel. He's probably going to be going into Roche. He's going to get the Deny here. Hoping for it. No. Uh, last hit from the Huskar. Very close. And in the meantime, uh, Arch had to pop a, uh, a, a pot in the middle of... Uh, Getting bullied out by Ivory here. The puck is just uh, laying into Pudge, who's now sitting on no mana and two bottle charges. So, 
Yeah, I mean, that's a really, really strong matchup, because Pudge, you know, his mid-damage depends on landing those hooks and catching the other mid out of position, and a puck will not let you do that, whether it's through jaunting to an illusory orb or phase shifting out of any sort of oncoming hook projectiles. He's going to be really hard to get a hold of, so unless there's a full-on gank by the rest of the Dire Heroes, maybe a Fissure from the Earthshaker could start things off. Uh, it's going to be really, really hard to make Ivory stop farming, and he's leading up the last hit chart by almost 10. Yeah, I think... Uh... They'll probably have to roll some smokes here and uh, have Shadow Shaman come middle to at least get uh, a double disable on uh, Puck, or else he's probably going to just have free reign in middle. But uh, speaking of sh shackles from Shadow Shaman up top, Ricky taking a lot of damage and harassment uh, with that dire sentry ward being down. He's going to have to tango up here and have some of that passive regen from uh, his fade time. Yeah, he's doing alright. I'm not sure if he's aware of the Dire Sentry here. It's obviously doing a lot of work, making sure that Ricky never feels super secure in lane. Uh, but there's been no real kill attempts on the Ricky. He's able to get out just fine. It seems like right now Anti-Mage wants to prioritize creeps over kills, and I think that's important for now. Yeah, you can't blame him. He got bullied very early with the Coddle uh, blasting all his waves and not being able to get in there to get last hits, so he's going to take this opportunity to get some solid farm. Yeah, speaking of Coddle, he's actually going to be rotating here, down bottom, hopefully spamming out those Illuminates down here onto Gay Dance and Cupcake, rather than up top, because Ricky feeling pretty safe and secure, even underneath that Sentry Ward, and that Sentry Ward will expire in a couple of moments. There's no vision on this Puck rotation here. This could be yeah, a big Yeah, it looks like our first game coming in. Yeah, they want to bait out the Intimate a little bit, but down bottom here, there's actually going to be some kills coming out. Mana Leak, stunning up Hush, he wants to do what he can. Looks like uh, Juggernaut will be going down, but meanwhile, up top, more damage going down. We've got a Dream Coil committed onto Hands of God. Sha Shadow Shaman will be the first to fall down bottom. It looks like everyone lives for now, as everyone's able to retreat, even if uh, Juggernaut is pretty low health. He actually doesn't skill up any points in the Healing Ward, which, when there's no dedicated healing supports on the side of the Radiant, I would have thought he'd want to grab that up. Yeah, he could have abused that as well with uh, getting the mana back from Coddle, but, um, you know, opting to go more damage oriented. But uh, unfortunately for, for Jug, checking the jungle, uh, one of the pull camps is currently warded off, so he'll have to uh, feist go somewhere else to get that. But looks like mid, we have Pudge trying to position himself to get this Huskar, but uh, unfortunately, I don't think as a Pudge that's uh, necessarily who you're going to be wanting to hook, so. <laughs> Yeah, you only bring the danger closer to yourself, and you get him lower and faster and meaner in the process. It's it's not the ideal target, but at this point, he might want to go for whatever he can find. Yeah, very true. And up top, uh, Ricky now knows that there's a sentry here as AM tried to bully him out of the lane while he was invisible. So uh, he should be well aware that there is a sentry pretty close to where he currently is. Down Got bottom, some action down be... bottom here. Yeah, uh, Juggernaut spinning in, but he just doesn't have the health pool to deal with this. Omni gonna be trying to do what he can. The Fissure from Gay Dance and Cupcake oh, ends up finishing off the Juggernaut, up. but nice Dream Coil going in. Looks like Hush will be falling as well, so it's gonna be two return kills for the Juggernaut, but you never want to see your hard carry fall. Very true, but uh, very good plays between the uh, puck up. Let's scoot over to middle here. We have Arch doing uh, some dismember hook onto uh, Huskar here, so let's see how this battle turns out. And as expected, what we thought so earlier, uh, not too well in the favor of the Pudge, even though he had a very tough uh, early lane. Um, even worse for him right now from a starting perspective. Ac absolutely no room, and uh, Huskar had just hit six before that fight took place, and uh, easy, easy kill for the Huskar. Yeah, I mean, if we're just looking at last hits right now, Pudge has seven compared to the Puck's 23. Uh, it's it's really hard to be a Pudge in this game because there's so many mobile targets. I think uh, you really got to go for super sneaky picks on Keeper of the Light or maybe even the Ricky heroes that you know you can get close to yourself and lock down. Because again, if you pull in the Puck, he's just going to phase shift out. If you pull in the Huskar, he's just going to kill you. Yeah, very true. Uh, it's going to be tough with Ricky as well, though, because if he sees you coming at all, Here we he's go. just going to drop that cloud. Yep. Pounce from the Huskar immediately goes into hands of God. Can Deadaster live through this? He's actually getting very, very low. He will live for now. The Shaman goes out. There's going to be the Ricky ult as well. Usually, uh, Ricky ult not picked up at level 6, but it certainly uh, did its work off, here. Yeah, well, it certainly paid off in that situation. Uh, I think he was hovering on a skill point there, and he had just picked it up from what I looked at, but, um, you know... If that's the case, you know, smart move for CN. Uh, if he had it beforehand, uh, I don't think the value is that great early game, but uh, he clearly thought so. So we got the rotation coming in up top. 
Earthshaker, uh, gay dancing cupcakes, trying to move into a position here. However, you're spotted out. Puck, uh, make a vision over that tree, but uh, in the meantime, Huskar over on the left hand side there, uh, sitting right on top of Shadow Shaman. Nice dunk by gay dancing cupcakes. You can't get silent stuff. That should be an easy kill between CN, Ricky, and the, uh, you know, Puck there, comboing out with the silence. Not too much uh, Earthshaker to do once he already dunked the dunk. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Earthshaker, he just wanted something out of that. Let's talk about these lane swaps, because I don't think we've had stable lanes for at least, you know, more than three minutes. And we've got to now keep her the light against an anti-mage holding mid. Anti-mage going to be taking a mana leak, but he just doesn't care. Uh, Gora's doing what he can to try to get the wave low, but may actually pay with his life. As LDS visual, he's here and ready to slap down the old man. Yeah, in the meantime, it looks like Pudge tried to get into position to try to find somebody by rotating bottom, but unfortunately the rest of the Radiant had uh, already shifted, and as soon as he leaves, uh, he oh, missed out on finding the Huskar, but once again, that's probably not who he wants, but they do have vision of him uh, once he uh, ran past that dire um, vision ward down here. Oh, this looks bad, as maybe Didaster bit off more than he can chew. They're going to be casting that Repel on the Omni Knight, anticipating maybe a pounce, but it's... I mean, if it, Huskar is big, but I don't think he could tie into this. Uh, even just the burst purification from the Omni Knight might be able to get him down low enough to where it's not worth it. Uh, we got a kill up top. Totally Ricky found Shadow Shaman trying to walk through with a hasted puck. Uh, it's not going to happen. And unfortunately, as far as I know from an interaction standpoint, uh, Repel's not going to save you from Huskar's life break as it does go through uh, magic immunity. So. Our burning spears aren't magic, are they? Uh, no, but the life break is. Uh, okay. And, uh, Right, and Burning Spear is, though, right? So you won't take the Burning Spear damage, but you will take the Light Break damage. Yeah. And, and we're about to find out right here. Yeah, I mean, we're going through. We've got Didaster. He actually might be deterred from this. The hook comes through onto the Omni. I'm not sure that was the play, as Puck now going to be sitting at very, very low mana, letting a creep whack down on him. The Radiant certainly applying the pressure here. And Huskar, he's feeling safe going into this tower. He's 5-1-2, and two, and there is going to be no hook available for now, as Pudge has to sip up that bottle to get enough mana. Yep, in the meantime, it, uh, Earthshaker's trying to find some solo farm, going with that level 4 and can't totem, and uh, unfortunately, Pudge, very good hook. Uh, we got a nice solid Omni Knight Slash going on there. Uh, or, geez, Omni Slash, there's too many Omnis in this game. And, uh, oh, this member coming out on him, and they... Gay Dancing Cupcake with that four points of Enchant Totem just comes in and smacks Juggernaut right in the face that uh, he happens to be missing, so. I thought your call of Omni Knight Slash was actually a pun, but... You know, because he went uh, in and yeah. when busted that be up. No, there wasn't some crazy double entendre, so. Now you gotta just pretend with it. Roll it was. Wow, what a good one, man. That was there awesome. You, there you go. Um, so far, the Radiant Heroes are just getting everything they need to out of the lanes. The Puck, uh, he doesn't have a lot of kills for himself. He's, you know, uh, 0, zero 4, but he has those assists, and he's feeding the Ricky, who's now 5 0 oh, 1. That's exactly what you need to do to get this guy in a position to go into the late game, because now he's got so much room to farm, and. Yeah, the Dire, they're going to be good about carrying Vision, but if he's at a point where he can just go in and destroy you before you have time to react, that's yeah. really difficult. Ricky's farm right now, he should be uh, he should be set for a uh, defusal blade probably in the next three or four oh, minutes. Oh, wow, nice blink! Uh, disjointing the life break there from the Huskar. LDS Visual going in. Hook is off the mark from Arch. There's going to be a oh, really wait, nice wait, Illuminate wait. catching oh, Hush in nice. place. Hush is going to be burning down here. There's a nice spin from the Juggernaut going through. There's going to be a dismember, but of course the Magic Immunity going to be making that kind of a non-factor. Jug falls anyway. There's a Life Plague there. Finally comes through. There's a Shackle from Hands of God. They might be able to get down the Huskar. They do have to trade their Omni Knight and their Shadow Shaman for that kill, but it's worth it to get down the two cores on the Radiant. Yeah, looks like Puck's going to try to get out of here doing some phase shifting. Does have a Blink Dagger now, but going to be uh, in a tough spot to use Waning Rift as well as uh, being short on mana, but does Illusionary Orb out. Uh, let's see if uh, Jaunt will save uh, the little fairy or not. But nah, he's like, fine, uh, but meanwhile... going on, you got Ricky finding the Gay Dancing Cupcake in middle, and that is another kill going the way of Ricky, uh, who may actually sit here waiting and pick off the Omni Knight, who does not have any detection, uh, and he may go for this as well, since uh, Ricky is about 400 gold short of getting that uh, Diffusal Blade, which will be monumental in the Radiant uh, attempts here to push towards middle as uh, you'll be able to get rid of that Omni Knight shell. Mm -hmm. This Diffusal's coming out very well timed because it's on top of Power Treads and the Orb of Venom. It's not like it's all he's going for. Ooh, Puck going in oh, uh, yeah. might pay for this. That's nice, a little nice bit of a combo. Yeah, he's going to get shackled up. 
and <laughs> unfortunately Ivory will die. There's going to be a dive in here from CN on the Ricky going in, taking the ether shock to the face. Arch getting very, very low, has to back off, has an empty bottle. Gay Dancing Cupcake, he's in, he puts down a center, he's got the Echo Slam if he can get it off. Does he dunk? He does dunk! He gets yep. down the Huskar. Can't uh, can't have that magic resist from Huskar I've lived through a dunk. It's just not going to work. Too much burst Ooh. right now. Down bottom, LDS Visual going in with the YOLO saves, blinks his way away to safety as Juggernaut was just about to polish him off. So good guy, save from that. But now leaving the Juggernaut to free farm for just a little bit. He's going first item Morbid Mask. And, and uh, while that was taking place, Ricky, with another pickup on Shadow Shaman, uh, went in on four people, popped his ulti with a cloud, and picked that one up very easily, right on top of a sentry ward nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, this Ricky don't care about vision, because no matter what, the Dyer still aren't able to lock him down. As far as stuns go, they've got the Shadow Shaman Shockles, and they've got the Fissure. And that's really it, and that's not enough to keep a very slippery Ricky and a Puck under your grasp. Oh, oh there's the Puck. Silence. Waning ripped out. Very nice hook from Pudge. Yeah, pick up that kill on Ricky. Uh, and Puck is just going to zip out of there because he doesn't want to do with anything uh, in that regards. But going back in right now against three with another waning rip silence. Going to try to orb out, but unfortunately, Dancing Cupcake already had that enchant totem waiting for him and smack her right in the face. <laughs> yeah, that Earthshaker, his pockets are now pretty full. He's going to be picking up a Shadow Blade on top of a Blink Dagger. Uh, it seems like, you know, mobility is always great. Uh, no hate on that. Um, but that's because he took out the wiki Ricky's Wicked Sick Streak. Say that one five times fast. And yeah, that feels really good. Ricky's still dead. When he comes back, he's going to have that full charge defusal. He's going to be able to go back in lane and farm, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult for himself because he knows he's not immortal. Yeah, we'll have to see if the Earthshaker just goes straight Shadow Blade or if he's going to build it into a Silver's Edge because that could definitely help with some of these passives on the uh, the side of Radiant. But in the meantime, he's going to Enchant Totem in Fissure and Enchant Totem again and say goodbye to Huskar. Yeah, At he the same got... time, we have a battle going on on bottom. You got Ricky blinking in, clouding onto the AM. Almost got hooked by Pudge, but, uh, you know, too many battles breaking out. Jug will probably, oh, eight seconds left before his ulti is up. So we'll see how this one turns out here. Yeah, they've got the Dream Quail Pudge here. I think Arch is a dead man. He's going to try to rot himself to death. Does end up getting the Dismember here onto the Juggernaut, but it's not enough to save him. Is Juggernaut able to get that last, last swipe onto the Pudge, uh, courtesy of some help from his buddy, Ricky? I totally missed that kill down bottom because I tried to find the one up top. And then, uh, yeah, no while... problem. It looks like Jug did that value point that we were discussing earlier on into uh, the healing ward. Um, Would have probably liked to see that during the laning stage, but they seem to have a very stable lane, so it uh, really didn't... Didn't air too much, and uh, while while we were chit chatting here, Shadow Shaman dropping the uh, Serpent Wards and picking up the first uh, first tower of the way of the Dire. Yeah, and I mean we we're talking about healing just a little bit a while ago. That's a nicely timed mechanism there from the Keeper of the Light on top of Tranquil Boots, and he's been doing a great job buying up Sentry Wards to try to de ward the Dire. Yep, that we're gonna have a uh, sneaking suspicion something's going on here as Jug just ran by a. Uh, oh, Omni. He's in some trouble. Gonna yep. be taking a cloud. Silence up. There's nothing you can do for now. Yeah. CN gonna be going in, showing no mercy. Ooh, really nice fissure connects though. There's gonna be the Ricky Ultimate trying oh, to get down the Dire ult, Heroes. Though. And Gay Dancing Cupcake will fall. So they have to sacrifice the Keeper of the Light. It's worth it for the Omni, the Pudge, and the Earthshaker up here in the top lane. And yeah, the tower they're, they're, as well. They're comboing out very well between the... Oh, AM's going to try to make a move here, popping his ulti, and uh, gets one, but for his own life, uh, probably not worth it uh, from, from that standpoint whatsoever. Although, I mean, I honestly... Uh, all, chat does, all chat doesn't agree, but... I honestly can't say if that's worth it, because he gets the Ricky, which is now the highest priority target on the Radiant, but the rule to playing Anti-Mage is don't die ever in the early game. And yeah, he kind of violated that. Now, Hands of God, gonna be taking a life break to the face, but really nice repel or purification there from the Omni. They still do end up losing the Shadow Shaman, and hush, well, he could be in some trouble. Solo Guardian Angel! Solo oh, Guardian. he's deep now. Uh, yeah. hush. Yeah, no, you're gonna be taking a life break, and he will fall. Huskar, he's gonna be feeling fine. Inner Vitality's there to heal him up. The hook is off the mark, courtesy of the, pu uh, the Puck's phase shift. And that's going to be a tier 2 tower in favor of the Radiant. Yeah, that's uh, just a little bit too aggressive from Dyer's side. They really need to just sit back. We do have the first Shadow Blade uh, coming in here. Uh, that was very nasty on that Huskar. Um, so that's going to be 
Uh, something to see if he does go end up going Silver's Edge. Uh, probably even more damage coming out of the way of Gay Dance and Cupcake, but we'll have to see how he plays it out. I mean, that was just a case of the Huskar very much overstaying his welcome. The rest of his team has long backed off, and now CN might fall to the same fate. There is going to be a sentry. They scout out his movement. There's actually two sentries. Gay Dance and Cupcake goes in. They oh, get a third sentry third. down. They've got vision. Just buy dust. It's cheaper. And uh, CN going to be hiding out in these trees. But Pock is here. Nice oh. dream coil. Beautiful blinding light as well. We've got the serpent wards going down on the side of the dire. There is going to be the first casualty of the uh, pudge going down. We've got the mech on the side of the radiant. CN goes in. Gets a double kill for now. May end up paying with his life so the ricky does go down lots of gold there in the hands of the earth shaker sorry the shadow shaman getting that kill at least visual gotta stand still you're losing your mana but on the back lines ivory falls to gay dancing cupcake this earth shaker is making it work yeah very split out radiant did have a good opportunity there between the Drew coil as well as ricky's ulti at the same time but uh, unfortunately they were fighting right underneath serpent wards and uh, they just got too spread out from the uh the earth earth shaker fissure block and they were focusing on the Omni Knight, which is a smart thing to do, but Omni was way out of the fight and has no ulti, so they probably should have prioritized somebody else. Alright, so now we've got Anti-Mage with a completed Battle Fury on top of the poor man's shield. It's not the best timing possible, but it's certainly up there. It's, you know, he should have the treads completed now. I mean, he does have them if he wants to, but what's he saving up for here? Is he going for... You know, what's, what's his next big uh, item? I mean, he's probably going to go uh, finish his power treads as he just picked that up. And I'm guessing he's probably going to go Vlad's into uh, into uh, Manta this game. He's going to need it for the uh, you know, splitting out some of the things. Popping that on uh, Mana Leak as well as the Omni Slash. Hopefully your uh, illusions will soak up some of that damage. Uh, I'm not sure if it breaks out of uh, Dream Coil or not. I don't think it does, but uh, if it does, then that's also another high-quality value point. Plus, you can dodge Life Break with it. All right, so in terms of net worth, Ricky's now on top. He, or him and the Earthshaker are trading back and forth. It's just a matter of uh, right clicks. How does the Earthshaker manage to be on top? Is this even a typical Core Shaker build? It seems like it's just kind of an offline Earthshaker that got accidentally huge. Oh no, uh, speaking uh, of which, really... Caster's Curse, Gay Dancing Cupcake, he's going to be sitting underneath, invised up underneath his own tower, looks like Juggernaut, he wants to tangle, he's going in deep, Anti-Mage is here to party, he goes in, pops the ultimate onto the puck, going to be taking an Omni Slash right to the face, LDS Visual may have overconnected there, and now Hush, he's back, he does have the Guardian Angel if he wants to spend it, but on the back lines, we've got a Dismember coming out onto CN on the Ricky Arch Season, but now he's going to walk out of the Sentry Vision, he's going to be brought back by the Keeper of the Light, he should be a -okay. Okay, hopping into that ultimate form. Uh, he won't get pulled out now because you popped his ulti. So he's going to be stuck in these trees. Now he's going to pop a TP to try to get out. But uh, <laughs> overall, not a terrible engagement. But uh, AM, probably thinking that his ulti does more damage than it does currently by blinking in on top of Puck. Uh, it just needs to choose his fights a little bit better. Um, I'm surprised no one from Radiant has yet to rotate the top, uh, as that is a pretty solid way for farm, but I imagine that uh, had Jug been carrying a TP, which he does not currently have, uh, he'd probably go farm that up, and it looks like Jug can't decide right now if he wants to go uh, uh, Vlad's versus Battle Fury. He has uh, kind of two items purchased up here between, the, between both of them, but looks like he's going to be going Battle Fury first based off of what's on the courier. Yeah, I don't think it's that bad. I think it's going to help his farm keep up with the Anti-Mage, because the Battle Fury obviously keeps your farm going exponentially. It just helps you get more, quicker, easier. And Anti-Mage is known for hitting that peak at the mid-game and then just getting bigger and stronger than any other carry. I think that's the play here. Just try to keep up with the Anti-Mage for as long as you can. We have wards dropped on the Tier 1 tower, but meanwhile, the Radiant, they're all here. They're ready to go. There's going to be a life break here onto Hush. There's nothing he can do about it. The BKB popped. They're going to have the Echo Slam. It doesn't have taken down the Keeper of the Light. And now we've got CN ready to go. There is the Dismember if he wants. He's going to pop into his ultimate form. So Ricky going to be uh, dodged out for a little bit there. And now life break again peels down the Shadow Shaman. And, <laughs> I mean... The wards, it seems like they didn't need to drop for the tier 1, they could have held them on for the tier 2, maybe if they wanted to go for that push, but after losing both the dire supports, it's, uh... We'll, we'll see how this fake back goes right here, I don't know how well this is going to play out between Puck and, uh... Yeah, we still, no, no Echo Slam up on Cupcake, but... Oh man, I didn't even catch out that kill up top, kill it up seemed top. like... Juggernaut just went in, busted out the Omni Slash to take out the Anti-Mage, who we found farming in the jungle. And there's the BM question mark in the old chat. You gotta love it. 
Yeah, Jug really needs that, though, considering AM is currently up um, almost double the uh, last hits. Not that that means everything in the game, but uh, from a last hit perspective, uh, definitely needs that Battle Fury, which is now completed on Jug, and hopefully he can start ramping up his farm here because he uh, oh. seems to be behind. Hush just gets destroyed after he TPs in. Yeah, that was not the TP there. You should not have uh, gone that close to the Radiant Heroes, especially a Huskar that can just life break you over and over again. He has the BKB ready to go as well. So, you know, if Pudge wants to tangle, well, he can accept that we have the uh, no Echo Slam ready to go. There is going to be a really nice silence there from the puck. Fisher catches out three, but not before Shadow Shaman falls. And Puck's still trying to fish in the corner here, but that uh, just gave himself away, so... Ricky is well aware of this, as well as Keeper, because they both saw the hook come out. Yeah, I mean, the Radiant, they're in the mood to apply a lot of pressure. You know, heck, they don't even care if Pudge hooks you. If, if Pudge hooks in Deadmaster, he's the one that's going to be dead. There is going to be a BKB here. Pounce is going to be disjointed uh, by the Anti-Mages Blink back, but now Pudge might be in a world of hurt. He's scouted out. Uh, Ivory wants to go in. Pudge is going to go in with a dismember. Ivory is pretty squishy. We'll end up falling there to the Anti-Mage Ultimate. We're going to have Ricky hopping into that, uh spin to win for. I'm going to be chunking down LDS visual. He's going to blink down to the low ground. Meanwhile, Huskar might have bitten off more than he can chew. He's going to get a nice bit of mana back and keep where the light, but oh, oh dug no. down! And we're going to have the Guardian Angel to boot, so it looks like Juggernaut could be in a little bit of trouble. He has no TP. He's just got the it, face boots. Fisher is up here, so again, Dancing Cupcake should just, oh, be instead blink backwards. So, uh, unfortunately, when you double tap your blink dagger, uh, you go back towards base instead of moving forward. So, Omni Knight almost dead here, oh. but ends up getting, getting the Omni Slash off, and it's going to be a triple going that way instead of the other way. Uh, I thought he was dead. A team white from Dire, but uh, with barely any HP left, Omni Slash coming out from the Juggernaut and just wrecking the Dire side. Yeah, I mean, he disappeared from the map, so I just thought he was dead, but he was casting the Omni. He goes through perfect timing on that. And uh, Juggernaut, he's feeling real, real happy that that worked out for him. The Ricky and the Juggernaut stay alive, so the key players on the side of the Radiant, they're, uh, they're going to go back to base. They're a little bit spooked and shaken, but they're, they're still up and fighting. Anti-Mage, he has five deaths. And again, if Anti-Mage dies a lot in the early game, it's a lot harder for him to come back in terms of farming potential, because he always needs to be getting those last hits in that net worth. Yeah, it looks like Pudge is uh, almost completed up with his Aether Lens. He's missing another key component and should be all set with some larger hooks, which desperately needs since he seems to be a little short on uh, most of them throwing out. Absolutely. So in terms of momentum, looking at the overall net worth and XP, we're over 10,000 in favor of the Radiant. If you're the Dire... Pretty rough early game. Yeah, it, it's a really rough early game. If you're the Dire... What's your plan for getting back in this? Do you go for pickoffs with the Pudge Hooks, or do you try to go for smoke ganks and full-on team fights? I mean, you might go with smoke ganks while you leave your AM pushing lanes, just so you can get oh. some farm up and get some split push going. But uh, unfortunately, oh, actually, uh, that's a that's a plus one there for Dyer. I thought that uh, Pudge had caught that out, but, uh, you know, pretty good. Puck did not get a, enough waiting rift time to uh, get an illusionary orb out, and uh, may have been a little goof up there from uh, Ivory's side, but... Um, you know, back to the back to the point as to how dire. I mean, that's what they need. They need pickoffs like that. They got to find Ricky and Jug as well. If they could get pickoffs on those two, uh, they'd probably be in a little bit better shape. While the AM is just off in uh, farming. And speaking of farming, AM is now picking up a Reaver. Uh, so going straight heart, which is a little unusual. Uh, I would have preferred to see the, um, you know, moving into a Mantis style, but uh, we'll see how the heart pays off from a little tankiness perspective to see if he can live through some of this damage. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the tankiness is going to be great, and it's going to be harder to bring him down, but he just gets so much more when he does have that mana. Now he's going to try to blink away without busting up too much mana. He does get the Radiant Courier! There's 850 gold on that Courier. Now we've got a BKB here on the side of the Huskar. What's going down is there's two separate sides of the fight. Uh, Juggernaut does get down the Anti-Mage, which is super unfortunate. Now... Disaster. He's looking to go in onto Arch. Arch is silenced up, but on the back lines, Ricky's able to take down the Shadow Shaman, goes in, first hit bash here onto Gay Dancing Cupcake, who's silenced up, takes a dagger right to the back of the head, courtesy of that puck, and yeah, bye bye. That Earthshaker yeah, is certainly dead. Brilliant pickup by the Ricky, picked up a gem with all these uh, invisible heroes that seem to be uh, trying to stroll in from the side of the dire, especially that uh, Earthshaker. Great pickup. 
All right, now we've got Jug applying some pressure here to the tier three tower. Should he get punished for this, or did Dyer even want to expend the resources? Uh, I mean, just between, I don't think there'll be a buyout, that's for sure. Um, Punch with a blink, though, blink this member. Uh, Omni Knight a little off there on the heel. There still might be in a little bit of trouble, but it uh, looks like Keeper's going to be coming over to try to save him. Um, it'd be good to get out of this, I'd imagine. Dispel coming out on top of uh, Hush. Hush is going to be sitting here. Huskar uh, stuck in a lot of creep, and TP out is not going to work for the Omni Knight. Yeah, now we've got Keeper of the Light picking up a huge chunk of gold there from that wave. He is going to be getting very, very close. He actually has his Aghanim Scepter whenever he wants to pick it up. That's going to make that uh, pure form a little bit nice. Keep him always with that blinding light, which is going to be fantastic. And especially being able to bail his carries out of danger or bring them into the fight after they die and respawn from danger. That's the power of that recall. So now we've got Hands of God going in. He just steps up a little bit too far, immediately punished. There's a Fissure, catches out three. Really nice ultimate from the Anti-Mage. We're going to have the Puck, or the, uh, yeah, the Puck diving a little bit deep, phase shifting out of this, but I think that is a dead fairy dragon. Yeah, good job on Dancing Cupcake for, for figuring out that the phase shift does have to end and the Puck does have to die. But Radiant, they're still feeling kind of strong. They only lose the Puck there compared to the Pudge and the Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman did have wards up before he went down and didn't opt to drop them defensively. Yeah, level 1 Serpent wards probably would have been helpful. Uh, now just level 2, he actually leveled right before he died. Um, Pudge had a good deny there. Unfortunately, Radiant couldn't pick it up. Oh, oh Echo Slam, slam catches out the Ricky, followed up by the Fissure. They are going to get down the Huskar as well. There's a nice Omni Slash doing some work. Looks like they might pick up the Omni, but no. No, Juggernaut, he's going to fall as well. They get the gem back up from off the floor, so that's going to be Ricky's gem. Can they cancel this? They do cancel this. This is going to be a dead Keeper of the Light as well. It's a full wipe. The Dire, they're back in this. They don't lose yeah. a Rax. They get a wipe. This is their window. This is, yeah. Their uh, probably smart move would be to go to Roast then push down that tier one in middle. Um, unfortunately, they look to be opting just to go to the small neutral camp, and everyone else seems to be running back to base. So uh, they're definitely wasting the 30 seconds or so of, of uh, positive time that they could have had, but uh, maybe the AM after he finishes uh, cleaving down these dragons, so blink into the uh, Roast pit, as should be the call. Um, but... Uh, looks to be deciding just to be content with um, the defense of their base and, you know, pushing out the lanes a bit. All right, so Puck is going to be grabbing up a Perseverance. Lotus Orb or Lincoln's? Uh, I'm going to go with Lincoln's, considering uh, Lotus Orb is going to be a little bit tough for him her, to get out. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of the, uh, the Lincoln Sphere on top of Puck's. Would Puck just member himself? Signal. What was that? Uh, with a Lotus Orb, would Pudge dismember himself? Uh, yes, and I think that's how the interaction works, but then you're both just sitting there devouring. <laughs> so, uh, same with Shackle. Uh, I think you both Shackle. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't think it'd be worth it from this lineup, per se. Uh, you'd be much better off with just not having to worry about being Shackled or dismembered. Yeah, I, I think the Lincolns is what they're looking for here. Uh, Puck's going to be going in. Who's Hellbear Smasher is that? That's, uh, that's Huskar's Hellbear Smasher. It's pretty cute. Yep. Uh, we are going to have a very aggressive position here from the Ricky. He should know that he lost his gem. We are going to have the Puck going in. Has the Dream Quail here. Connects onto Arch. Does Arch break it? No, he's trying desperately not to, but there's the life break. He's going to go in. He's going to get the Dismember here, but the Illuminate is just going to be enough to help chunk down the Pudge. So that's going to be... Uh, Ricky getting a kill on the Omni Knight on the back lines as Puck finishes yeah. off the Pudge. Omni had no chance there with the double damage Ricky. He just uh, got chunked down too quick inside of the cloud while getting diffused. Yeah, so Radiant, they're going to continue their slow siege of the high ground. Shadow Shaman, he still has his wards. If he wants to drop them defensively, it might be just enough to keep the squishier Radiant heroes back. Oh, oh no. Like the Shadow Shaman's not going to be able to get it off again, unfortunately. Poor Shaman, that was his 15th death of the game. Yep, that's the uh, second time that Major Team fights around the uh, racks. He was un unable to get off his ulti, but in the meantime, he blinked on here and jumped on as the Omni Knight. Uh, Monovoid coming out, not actually hitting too much. Looks like Earthshaker's trying to find a good position, but unfortunately, able to do so. Uh, just ends up going smack and jug in the face once and blinking out of there. Yeah, I think he should drop the gem in the base and maybe let his team use it if they need to, but he's going to hold it in his stash. He's going to be moving out that bottle. So Radiant, they get what they need. They get a nice clean lane of Rax. Is this just going to be the end? 
Uh, yeah. I mean, you still have, uh, you still got Echo Slam up. Um, Ooh, nice hook! Ricky, Ricky immediately jumping into his ultimate form. He's gonna be zip zapping away, and now Arch just kind of sitting there, smelling the roses. It's gonna get life breaked up, but there's just such a response. The BKB from the Huskar might not do enough. They get down the pudge. Huskar, he's hitting so fast as he gets lower and lower. Earthshaker does end up falling courtesy of that Illuminate. The wards are dropped defensively. Juggernaut trying to spin away, avoiding a little bit of that damage, but no! Hands of God! Oh man, he's gonna get a nice shackle here, but he dies for the 16th time. Very nice crit shaker going on there. He's going to get a fissure in place. They opt to go for the Ricky. Uh, that's that's not a crit shaker. Nicholas. That's a deso shaker. Yeah, he just, uh, I mean, he just smacked him right oh! Very nice dunk. I don't know if that was worth it, but I guess in his opinion it most certainly was. He's tired of that pesky little silent assassin sitting in the back poking you in the, in the kidneys, so he just decided to lay it down on him. That was just... That was just a final get out. He wins all the style points, but now that Echo Slam is going to be down for 90 seconds. He's going to wish he had it now, going into onto this puck who's nice and slippery. Goes in again there with the phase shift, dodges out. There's going to be a Guardian Angel here, I guess to defend against the Juggernaut, but that seems uh, a little bit overprotective. I think both teams kind of really wanted to disengage from that fight, so they just decided to call it quits there, and Omni was like, well, we might as well just ulti and get out of here. <laughs> and there is a uh, Lincoln Spear picked up on Puck, uh, as we had thought. Um, I am also, back to your Earthshaker comment, uh, quite surprised that the gem is still just sitting in his inventory, not on the ground or on, you know, perhaps Shadow Shaman. Though he has multiple deaths, he could get around and do some dewarding, uh, or, or, or someone could, if it's not the Shadow Shaman, so. Alright, so Dire, they're confined to their base. You can't have an anti-mage being stuck in the base. He needs to get out. He needs to get farming. He has the heart. He's picked up a Yasha on top of that as well, but I he should finish the Manta. He needs to have finished the Manta. We're 35 minutes in. The heart's great, but it's not going to give him that little extra edge in teamfights. I don't know. Yeah, and I, I think he should have reversed the order because he would have been able to push out these lanes had he gone uh, Manta first, but... You know, he wanted to sustain in team fights, but unfortunately they haven't had a successful team fight, but it looks like he might get stuck right here. Uh, yeah, it looks like leak. Yeah. this is going to be it. He's going to be dream coiled in place. He can't blink. He can't live. He's going to try, but he's going to get stunned up. I think that's just allowing for more and more damage to be sprayed out. He's waning rift. He's going to get healed up by the Omni. The Omni might actually be the saving grace here. Fantastic plays by him, keeping that anti-mage alive. He's trying to get out with all of his might. And all the dire heroes live. Radiant have to bust a lot. They do pop the Dream Coil from the puck. Now we're going to see Gay Dance and Cupcake go in. He does have the Echo Slam if he can find it. He's going to be saving it up for now. There's going to be a really long life break. Good God. That guy flew through the air onto the Pudge. But now it's just going to be Ricky picking off the Shadow Shaman for uh, a couple of times now. And Ivory trying to live through this. Pops the Dagon onto LDS Visual, but it hardly hurts. Arch on the back lines will be falling to the puck. And now LDS Visual, he wants to get out. He's barely alive. The Mana Leak is going to stun him off. Yeah, the CN gets a kill. This could be it. I I think Radiant here, they can certainly secure bottom racks. They might be able to take a tier 4 if they'd like to. There's no buyback on the Anti-Mage. There's no buyback on the Earthshaker. No buyback on the Pudge. Everyone's bought out here. No one was really thinking you'd have to buy back just yet. But Radiant, they are merciless. Very true. Ricky, it's got a nasty lineup here. He's out of defusal charges, but between that and the Skull Basher and the Hyperstone with Sage and Yasha, he's just hitting like a truck behind uh, behind enemy lines here. And very strange that Radiant haven't rotated the top lane yet to take out that last remaining tier 3. Uh, instead, it seemed to be perhaps BMing by uh, slow sieging here. <laughs> I mean, I think Radiant, they've got the luxury to do it. Ricky's going in. They are going to be now focusing the tier 4s. Anti-Mage, he's going to be up in 30 seconds. I mean, you've got the Shadow Shaman up now, but again, with 17 deaths and just two points in the wards, I maybe you drop the wards defensively, but... Oh, no! Puck cut out of his own base! He wants to just reach the high ground. He will actually get out. CN going in, popping into that ultimate form. Maybe they get down the Shadow Shaman again. Maybe CN overcommits here. Pudge gets the killing spree off of the Ricky. There's going to be a Yules here. Ah, uh, that's, uh... Keep where the lights Yules going to be going in. If there's actually a comeback here, I don't know. Keeper the Light does get popped down, so Dire finds something, but again, the Ancient is under siege. Puck here has the Dagon off cooldown. The Hook, not gonna go through courtesy that phase shift. There's gonna be a jaunt to the Illusory Orb, getting down to the low ground safely, 
And Ricky, Ricky just saying, please, man, as, as Huskar is finally pushing out this top lane, maybe hoping to go in for the final set of racks, but Ivory slowed up, face shifting out. I think this is it for the Fairy Dragon. He's surrounded on all sides. He does get brought down, and now Dadaster might have walked into some danger here. YG coming in. He has no Omni. There are the wards popped down. There's going to be the BKB as well, but uh, it's it's looking grim. Huskar actually gets a kill here on the Puck. A kill here on the Shadow Shaman as well. They're going in He's for Hush. There's going to be an Echo get Slam. Up. Dunk it in. Right, they're still fighting underneath the Shadow Shaman wards. I mean, they just uh, five-man team wipe coming in from Dire side. Um, you know, they should have, should have, could have, would have taken that top racks and probably would have had game by now. But uh, sure, Ancient is still under attack, but a lot of money picked up by Hush um, getting that kill uh, on the Omni Knight should help him in uh, his support role here. Gives also some time and space to this AM to farm down middle lane. Uh, they still have a lot of towers from the dire side to pick up from money perspective. Uh, Omni Knight just picking up his Guardian Greaves, and uh, it looks like Shaker is almost completed with his uh, Ag Scepter. And it looks like, uh, looking at items, yep, Manta just picked up from AM. So, uh, down and out with two racks down, but not completely gone, uh, is the dire side. I'm going to contest that just a little bit by pointing out the difference in no, net sure. worth. There's a little bit of a drop-off there after the team wipe, but still over 25,000 gold in favor of the Radiant. That's really That's big. That's a big cushion. Yeah, I mean, Radiant, I think they still have to throw two or three more team fights before we can really say, you know, Dire coming back, Dire is still in this. They're still confined to their base at this point. And again, the Anti-Mage, in terms of net worth, he's second to the Juggernaut. Anti-Mage should be hitting his peak right now, and instead he's kind of struggling to keep up with what you could consider the flimsier carry on the side of the Radiant. I'll agree with you there. They need about uh, two or three more team fights, uh, dire side that is, um, to hold to hold this down. But unfortunately, Pudge blinking in, trying to get something started here. He's going to get mono leaked up as well as punched in the back there by a double damage Ricky, who is now shackled up underneath the tower. You got Puck blinking in, blinking back out. He doesn't want anything to do with it. Shadow Shaman picking up a Ricky, and it looks like Dire's uh, radiant side is going to be backing up. Another mono leak on the side of uh, the Gore, trying to. Land on top of Dancing Cupcake. Cupcake now invisible. We've got a chase coming on. Let's see if uh, there could be a disengage. Ivory caught in a terrible position right now. Uh, they don't seem too concerned about the puck. Um, all right, well, we got the backline jug, just two shot of the shaman. Unfortunately, that is uh, another death for the uh, hands of God, who is now four and 19. Unfortunately, having a pretty tough game as a support shadow shaman. Yeah, he's, uh, he's not hitting a stride just yet. Some of the ward placements have been pretty on point. The shackles particularly have been super helpful for his team, but he's just been dead more times than he's been alive. And, you know, he's got the items he needs. He's got the four staff, the arcanes, and the ether lens. It's not like he's building horrendously. He just keeps getting caught out because he's such an easy target. Everyone else has some survivability on the side of the dire, and, you know, Shadow Shaman has the kick me sign on his back. Well, Roche pickup, which uh, might secure Radiance push to top, but in the meantime, Kato getting Kato out of position. I should be going down here from Shaker. Oh, they gave up on him. <laughs> they they showed him some mercy, maybe a little bit of mind play there, but maybe they wanted the AM to get the farm since the lanes are currently pushed in, and he's not currently able to get that. So I think maybe that's the only thought. A little buyout coming from Keeper of the White, who wants to uh, looks like Radiant want to end this, and they want to end it now. If they get Megas, I think it's over. I don't think Dyer have the best lineup to deal with it. But for now, I'd honestly say Dyer have a chance. It's a slim chance. It's not going to be an easy road up, but they have a chance. Uh, I say that as the Earth Juggernaut. Just got a solo kill on Jug. Yeah, yep. yeah, we saw that with the Fissure in the mid lane. It's, I mean, a Dyer, this is their window. If they want to go in, LDS Visual, he's feeling big. He doesn't have the Vlads in his stash. I'm going to be picking that up very, very soon. Shadow Shaman has the words to drop defensively if they need to, but... Radiant. Aside from the Juggernaut, they're all feeling relatively healthy and poised to go in. Deadster starts things off with a long-range jump here onto Gay Dance and Cupcake, who immediately invises himself, so Deadster in a little bit of trouble now. He's gonna go in onto Hands of God again. He's got the Kick Me sign. Can they get him down? And, uh, he got wards off, and a shackle. Very nice shackle. That is... a dismember from Pudge. Fortunately, it's not gonna be enough to save the Shadow Shaman. Fight's still going on on the back line. You got Pudge Trying to tank up as much as he can between the Ricky and the uh, the Huskar here. Hey, I'm gonna pop his ulti on Ricky. Unfortunately, not doing enough damage. Punch hook, kind of saving? Question mark. 
Earthshaker uh, probably would have wanted to be left alone there. Shaker trying to run in on this uh, Keeper of the Light. Hit him once. Maybe a Fissure. Go in the tower! Ooh, very nice. Tower! Oh man, I think Huskar had a huge misplay there. There is going to be uh, a destroying the tower. Finally, as Huskar burns the Aegis. Uh, he just needed one more hit there. The wards are going to expire. LDS Visual is doing his very best to try to clean up the creeps that are attacking his half health ancient now. Looks like Huskar might have overstayed his welcome. He is going to be killed off here in the top lane. The tower falls, the racks are exposed, the ancients at half health, but Dire, they're still standing. Can be a struggle. They uh, may just have to call the all in push down mid, but uh, with multiple, multiple towers standing in their way, that unfortunately will probably not be the easiest task. Alright, now Arch on the Pudge is going to be carrying that dust there, still worried about the Ricky. Where did our gem end up? Is Earthshaker... did he drop it in the base? I think it's still in his... I think it's still in his inventory. Alright, no, it's not in his inventory. No, no, no. Must have, must have gotten dropped somewhere. Hmm. Well, let's check mm -hmm. that. Uh, it's not on any hero currently, so it's got to be somewhere. It's not on the courier, it's not in the base. Maybe he hit it. I don't know. Um... Either way, I've, I've definitely done that with gems, you know, we don't need this anymore, let's put it in the most obscure tree line we can find. Uh, LDS Visual, he's doing what an anti-mage needs to do, which is just constantly be farming around. He's going, he's cleaning out the ancients, cleaning out the neutrals, cleaning out the lanes. He's got to get something, he's now got 2,500 gold, I think he can't buy out, he needs to save her buyback. Uh, he has buyout available. Uh, he's got enough gold for it. Um, pull up the buyout graph here. Yeah, I just, I, he can't like start picking up his next item because he's got to oh, be able agreed, to get back agreed. to these fights. Yeah, yeah he's going to have to hold for buyout. It's either uh, buy an item or hold for buyout. But uh, the question currently is, is what is he trying to work on? He still has a uh, a orb of venom in the inventory. I highly doubt he's going skiddy, but uh, uh, you probably want to go with uh, Basher into an abyssal in this game, but. Uh, buyout is probably the priority currently. Yeah, I think uh, Dyer, they need to make sure, even if there's a one fight, their Ancient could still easily be under siege uh, with any of the... Oh my god, that that effigy is beautiful. The Puck effigy next to the Half-Health Ancient. <laughs> yeah, a little downtime here, dreaming of Carl's. Yeah, very nice. Well, uh, Ivory hopefully dreaming of some Carl's himself. Has the Dream Coil off cooldown. Completed Dakin level 4. He's got a Lincoln's. He's got a Blink. And he's got a thousand gold in the bank. So Puck's feeling pretty good about himself. He's going to be fourth in the net, net worth chart. Uh, surpassing his uh, his counter mid. So let's... Let's talk about what Dyer do here to hold this next fight. Because it's going to come down to it in just a couple of seconds. Yeah, it's probably going to have to be Shaker with a good initiation to lock as many as he can, and uh, hopefully the rest of the team can backline in. Oh! That's extremely large. Uh, Deadster. Play by AM, waiting for the blink in. Puck rolling in here, three-man dream coil. Uh, let's see if Shaker can get in here to do any damage. Guardian part popped out from the Omni Knight. That is definitely what they needed to soak some of that damage. Punch currently locking out the not holding them back. Dust is pop. AM doing work. What AMs do. Kind of man mode against this Ricky. Hush with a, a nice kill there. Popping a purify. AM trying to sit on top of Puck. Unfortunately, very slippery. He's going to blink out of here. Uh, let's see if they chase. In the meantime, uh, looks like the Ancient still in pretty good shape. Gansing, Gate, Gansing Cupcake holding that back and blinking back over. Visual cleaning up Puck, uh, who could not slip away. And in the, also while that is going on, it looks like our uh, Pudge is trying to track down Keeper of the Light. Uh, might have a little standoff here, depending on who goes which way. And Puck is going to uh, Pudge is going to walk right into him, hook him back. He's going to get the dismember with the rot on top of this blinding light into an ooze. We'll see if he can get away. Puck has a blink dagger up. Nope, he's going to get hit by illusions and whips on the <laughs> the hook and uh, uh, the keeper just toying with him. Uh, no fear right now of uh, a monolith Pudge who's sitting on 3,600 health. He's just going to essentially stall him for time, as all he's doing here, while uh, Huskar <laughs> boots a travels back to mid lane. And unfortunately, uh, Pudge going to definitely overstay his welcome while trying to chase that uh, keep Coddle for about, uh, you know, 
three minutes or so. Shout out to Coddle for the jukes. I thought for sure, you know, a punch can a punch can take on a keeper of the light, no problem. But with no mana, that guy just put in some work. And yeah, definitely commended there as a deadster. Gets his money's worth out of his support. Yeah, definitely bought them some time. Uh, you know, not that they necessarily looking at the XP and gold draft at this point. Uh, that uh, 2,500 gold lead that we were talking about a couple minutes ago, uh, 10 minutes later is now under 10K. So crazier things have happened in Dota, but uh, they are definitely bleeding kills and money from the Radiant standpoint. And uh, they still have a lot of towers up, so I'm not saying that uh, throw the towel in for Radiant, that Dyer is going to come back from this, but... Uh, they're doing a heck of a job uh, tilting, that's for sure. Absolutely. We are going to have the Keeper of the Light sending those Illuminates through. I mean, we're reaching a point in the game where Anti-Mage needs to be a monster. And he is. He's on top of the net worth chart here. He has surpassed the Juggernaut. He's got the items he needs. He picked up the Vlads. He's got the Basher now. Going to be looking for that Abyssal Blade soon. He is saving for buyback, though, and that's something that's absolutely top priority. Radiant, it seems like they're going to try again to get this final set of racks. What I think they need to do is send in a couple distractions, meanwhile on the back lines, just go in and smack the ancient. and it's unprotected. They gotta do something here, just get a couple creep waves onto it, because... I mean, Dyer are doing such a good job holding their base. Is this... I mean... I thought a 25,000 yeah, gold... they should have pushed out the other two lanes before they try to dive this in again. They always get some momentum going in from middle and bottom, but... Uh, it looks like they're just gonna try to bully in top lane again. Yeah, so it's, uh... It's looking bad, and a Puck jumps in, gets a really nice Dream Coil on three, but immediately gets punished here. Deadster jumps, is probably going to be going into hands of God, but that Ghost Scepter is serving some work. LDS Visual going to be taking a little bit of damage now. They've got a nice Shackle here onto the Ricky. Awesome work being put in by the Shadow Shaman. Gay Dancing Cupcakes wants to secure a kill. They are going to have the Ricky Ultimate, though. He's, he's up. He's active. Can they finish him off? He is going to be trying to get away. And there's a nice Guardian Angel here. That's an Ag's Guardian Angel here for Omni Knight as well. So he's, he's doing some work. Oh, nice! Echo Slam! Getting down Ricky, as well as the Juggernaut, and now Deadster. Going to be falling as well, so it looks like all of the Radiant are going to get wiped again. Gorish just really wants this lane of racks. I don't think the right click from the Coddle is strong enough. They lose the Huskar as well. It's just going to be the Coddle alive to tell his tale, but the, the Crepes, they're getting the Ancient down. Ew, this yeah, is... Creep, creep MVP right now, another another quarter chunk down by the Creep pushing that in while the fight is going on, but unfortunately, uh, Radiant still focusing heroes, not focusing objectives. They uh, just go for racks, and you know they still have not uh, just pushed down middle going for uh, an exposed Ancient, uh, which they may want to just end up trying to do rather than try to get the Megas. Yeah, so it's, it's down to can the Dire keep the lanes pushed out, long enough to go in and get the tier 2 towers and get the tier 3 towers and the set of racks and the tier 4s it feels like these lanes are going to be always under siege considering that the radiant they're not giving up this top lane that's where they want to be that's where they're spending their time keeper of the light pushed out so aggressively without any vision of where the dire are yeah, first first tier one down for dire and middle uh, they're probably just going to keep this pain train going down mid but uh they're probably a little cautious that it's just Omni holding top lane right now, but um, you know they got to make do with the two two main cores. Uh, Ward's going to be committed for this. Uh, I guess they really want to get this push down middle, uh, and then most likely back and check Roshan, who uh, does look to be up. Um, so we'll see if they decide to rotate over there, um, or uh, or if they want to rotate towards bottom to try to get uh, one of the other remaining tier twos out of the way. Yeah, we've got Pudge down here in the bottom. It's going to get radically pinged out by his teammates. Wanting to go in. Looks like the Roche is the play. They're gonna be now they're going to have the TP back, though. Uh, Coddle is bringing the team in to try to get the racks up top, as well as uh, some boosts of travel coming in on the Jug, who is currently getting dismembered by Pudge. A very nice figure into a huge Echo Slam. What a dunk. Oh, man. The uh, AM is trying to man mode against Huskar, and he seems to do so. Jug getting wiped up as well. Range Rex still healthy, ba melee barracks still healthy, and you still have a quarter health dire ancient that has not been touched whatsoever. And Ricky's gonna try to sneak in here, but uh, he's gonna go right underneath two, two wards. Ghost Scepter coming in. Unfortunately, that does not help the Shadow Shaman who gets blasted in the face by a Dagon level five. Puck's gonna be trying to sit here. 
rack down these melee barracks uh, into a puck. And not going to be able to ult the orb. And a guardian coming out. They really want to clean up this Ricky, who's going to be sitting underneath the uh, the cloud trying to get the last hit on the melee barracks, which is sitting at 124 HP. And unfortunately, not going to be able to do so. And in the meantime, we got a little base action going on here, going straight for the tier fours, is the AM and Dancing Gay Cupcake, who's sitting on the Earthshaker, and they are going to push for Throne, and they will most certainly do it unless the Coddle can come out with some miracle when he lezzes in five seconds. But I don't think he's gonna be able to do anything because uh, this looks to be game. This is actually game here, and let's keep it like goes. He's gonna use that blinding light, so everyone's gonna miss for a couple of seconds. But oh man, he's gonna get punished here. This is just a case of the radiant. They got overconfident. They totally had the early game. They couldn't break the final high ground. They should have just focused the ancient instead of trying to go again and again and again for those top racks. What an exciting turnaround here before my gold graphs goes away from over a 25,000, almost a 30,000 gold XP down to almost 10,000 in favor of the Dire. That's probably one of the steepest turnarounds I've ever seen. Good freaking game, Dire. Yeah, they held out. They, uh, you know, really held on to that top Rex. They defended very well with uh, the combination from Echo Slam and good timing from the Shadow Shaman popping... Ghost Scepter and able to uh, lock out the important heroes with uh, both the Shackle as well as the Dismember from Pudge and just lock down the Jug as well as the Ricky and uh, you know no one could really do anything after that they just got dominated by gigantic Echo Slams. Yeah they got completely destroyed if you had to pick an MVP here who do you give it to? Uh, I'm going to go Omni, bro. I think uh, very clutch plays. He had a little sloppy early game, but uh, I think uh, right there at the end, both the Guardian Angels were uh, amazing with the Ag Scepter coming out. Um, and unfortunately, you know, he may have gone 4, 23, and 19, but Shadow Shaman had some really good ward placement. Uh, that Ghost Scepter really started helping out towards the end, getting him uh, the ability to get some shackles and, and chickens off. Uh, so I'm going to go with the uh, two support players from the Dire side. Man, I got I got a toss up between the Earthshaker and the Anti Mage. Early game, that Earthshaker had some of the clutchest dunks I've ever seen. But when it comes down to it, Anti Mage was the raw damage here. And even though it looked like he was confined to his base, he kept himself farming whenever he could find room. Ended up getting really important items. Don't necessarily agree with the early heart pickup, but you know what? He made it work. He went for the tier fours. He got the throne, and well, in the end, that's the objective of Dota. So I hope you enjoyed the cast. Uh, this was certainly a fun game to watch. I have had the pleasure of being joined by Dino Brutality X. Tell everyone where they can find you. You can find me over at uh, Twitter at Dino Brutality X, as well as on Twitch TV at Dino Brutality X. All right. Well, everyone, again, thank you for watching. If you've got any feedback for me or my co-caster, any ways on which we could improve, any tips, feel free to let us know in the comments or send us messages, tweet us, uh, just keep in touch. And again, I will be doing more replay casts as we go. Thank you so much.